The area around Virginia State University is rich with history. It has been the setting for many well-known chapters in our nation's past. But amid the Revolutionary and Civil War markers, there's a lesser known point of historical interest here. And for students of American writing, it's bringing literature lessons to life. It was very likely the happiest time of his life. Yet despite the hundreds of books and articles written about the life of Edgar Allan Poe, few devote little more than a footnote to the honeymoon he enjoyed with his child bride, Virginia Clem, in Petersburg, Virginia. Jeff Abigail has written hundreds of articles and a handful of books, but he never expected to write a book about Edgar Allan Poe. When he moved to Petersburg in 2005, he wasn't what you'd call a fan. I personally was not that interested in his work until I started to explore the history of his relationship in Petersburg. The relationship, it turns out, is highlighted by time Poe spent in the city, just after getting married in 1836. He married his 13-year-old cousin, Virginia Clem, and the biographies all mention that fact, but they never go beyond it. Uh, on occasion, they mention that they went on a honeymoon to Petersburg, but they don't elaborate at all. Original stairs that Poe and Virginia would have walked up to. So he began to wonder, in the city he now called home, was the site of Edgar Allan Poe's honeymoon still standing? He plunged into research of real estate records and other historical documents. This is what we would consider a living room or a sitting room. A adjacent room would have been the dining area. I began to uncover who was here and where he stayed and found out that it was in fact this building, number 12 West Bank Street, had a different number at the time. This is uh, where Edgar uh, and Virginia would have stayed on their wedding night. But it was 12 West Bank Street uh, was the site of Hiram Haynes' coffee house. Hiram Haynes was the editor of the local newspaper at the time, a friend of Poe who was happy to host the newlyweds in the tavern he owned. This was all several years before Poe would pen his most famous works. The thousand injuries of Fortunato I had borne as I best could, but when he ventured upon insult, I vowed revenge. You, who so well know the nature of my soul, will not suppose, however, that I gave utterance to a threat. At length, I would be avenged. This was a point definitively settled, but the very definitiveness with which it was resolved precluded the idea of risk. I think that's a classic example of his short horror stories that uh, at the time were probably seem a lot more horrific than they do now. So this, uh, this roof was put on maybe 30, 40 years ago. The dark, brooding nature of his work makes it hard to imagine that Poe was ever a happy newlywed, but his words remain a cornerstone in American literature. Once upon a midnight dreary, as I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, as I nodded, Nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis a visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. Professors love Edgar Allan Poe and students love Edgar Allan Poe as well. Uh, he's one of those few authors that uh, he's complicated and he's serious, but he's also uh, absolutely popular with absolutely everybody. It was many and many a year ago in a kingdom by the sea that a maiden there lived, whom you may know by the name of Annabelle Lee. And this maiden she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. Because of his childhood, his upbringing, um, and different physiological factors, I think he always questioned reality and always questioned the nature of existence. 
At the most remote end of the crypt, there appeared another less spacious. Its walls had been lined with human remains piled to the vault overhead in the fashion of the great catacombs of Paris. Three sides of this interior crypt were still ornamented in this manner. From the fourth, the bones had been thrown down and lay promiscuously upon the earth, forming at one point a mound of some size. Poe um, actually influenced me more uh, later on when I began to read everything that he had ever done. There's a very large psychological element to it, uh, as well as the aspects of loss and, and tragedy and uh, the big questions in terms of uh, eternity and uh, reality, the nature of reality. Poe is using a style that allows you to feel uh, uh, a response. W exactly what you think isn't important, but that you respond somehow to the, idea, to, to the idea of horror or beauty or mystery or the sublime is what he's after, right, to catalyze a response. But why would Poe choose Petersburg as a honeymoon destination? He and his bride were in the city at a time of what I would call the ascendancy of Petersburg. They're beginning to develop their railroads and making improvements with the canals, the uh, ports, and all of this is being geared to becoming a major tobacco producing city. I must not only punish, but punish with impunity. For students, to learn this local connection to Poe makes their lessons more meaningful. If you're a student at Virginia State and you have an instructor who begins to talk about Edgar Allan Poe, and that instru instructor can say, and two blocks from here, he walked up this street. Not every school can say that. Petersburg is one of the most historic cities in the Southeast, but most of its publicized history relates to the Civil War, the Battle of the Crater, and the Siege of Petersburg. In decades before the war, however, the town was a rich center of trade, ideas, and entertainment. As for Jeff Abigail, he has more than a book to show for his research on the matter. So this is a place that existed from 1829 to 1836. It was a coffee house through most of the 19th century. And now it's back uh, where a person can uh, come and pretty much do what Poe and his friends and Hiram Haynes did back in the 1830s, which is read books, have a cup of coffee, have a beer or wine, uh, and enjoy the environment where Poe actually sat and conversed with the people of Petersburg years ago. <laughs> But the raven sitting lonely on that placid bust spoke only that one word. As if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing further then he uttered, not a feather then he fluttered. Till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before on the morrow. He will leave me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, never. <laughs> <laughs>